user pool. So this is always a big one within knowledge mobilization. What's the user pool? And my story for you on this one that we've learned from and became a huge learning for us is hockey. So hockey in 1997 found that their coach, one of their favorite coaches, was sexually abusing their junior um, hockey members. And he has since found out to be, have sexually abused a whole bunch of them and has just recently been back in the system. So hockey was in crisis. And hockey came and said, we need help. What are we going to do about this? So the result of hockey is that this was a user pull. The user, the clients needed the help. They didn't have the information. We built a program called the Speak Out program around them, and they taught us some really big things. Some of the things they taught us about knowledge mobilization is we started going in by sending our people in to train their people. And then we looked at that and said, no, 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 this is not being so successful. Let's stop and look at this. We need to train their people to do the training. Because their people know the language. Their people know that have the credibility. They understand where this is happening. So we started training their people. Then we said, how do we even give more weight to this? And how do we really get this knowledge right into hockey? And the way it happened is it became mandatory that every coach in hockey had to go through the speak out session. So now in Canada, across Canada, every place where people are coaching hockey, they have to go through a speak out session on preventing violence against children and youth in order to get their coaching certificate. So the lessons there learned around knowledge mobilization is how do we work it so that we mandate things into existing systems and integrate it in so that it is sitting very firmly. It's in a certificate. It's sitting firmly. People need the knowledge. We need to give them that knowledge.